Hey guys, back here again. I hope you're all keeping well. Today I have some new stuff to look at. So let's get this unboxed and we'll see what it is. So this is a Thunder Bay 4 from Max Sales or Otherworld Computing or whatever they're called. It is basically a Thunderbolt 3 storage solution. Now I typically use my Synology NAS drives but Recently I've been finding them a little bit slow because of the data sizes that I'm working with. So if you imagine, you know, some of my virtual machines are kind of 100 gig plus, copying them up over gig ethernet can be a little bit frustrating. Now just to be clear, it's not a problem with the Synology, it's the fact that the units that I have don't support 10 gig ethernet. Now what I do have is a Mac mini server which does have a 10 gig connection on it and also it's uh, kind of the core of my setup now. So I thought it would be interesting to see what kind of performance we could get out of one of these. So let's get it out of the box and we'll see what it looks like. So it does come with a Thunderbolt 3 cable, not particularly long, probably half a meter maybe. And of course one thing to bear in mind, because it's ordered from the US, it comes with a US power plug. And there it is, there's our drive unit. It is quite weighty, I think the uh, shipping thing said it weighed about 12 pounds. Now I, I bought this last Wednesday from the US and I was quite surprised to see that they actually attempted delivery this Saturday which is really really good. It's actually Monday today so I wasn't around on, on the weekend for the delivery but let's get this set up, we'll have a look at the performance and uh, see how good it is. So the unit's all set up now. I've installed four 8 terabyte Western Digital gold drives. It didn't take very long at all. They're very easy to fit. One thing to bear in mind is they're not toolless like the Synology units. You do need a screwdriver to be able to do it. It doesn't take long though. It's very, very easy to do. Now the first thing I noticed when I plugged it into my Mac mini server here is that I immediately got the notification that all the drives needed initializing. So if we have a look at disk utility, you will see the drives here. It's that one, that one, that one, and that one. Now, fortunately, these units do ship with a license for soft RAID. So let's go through that process of getting these drives set up as the RAID that I want to use. Let's get soft RAID fired up then. It's already installed on this Mac Mini, and we'll go through the configuration process. There it is, soft RAID. I've not run it on this machine at all, so it's completely fresh. As you can see, it's doing some updates, so let's let that finish. Okay, that did take a little while to run. It seemed to go through some initialization process. It span up all the drives. I could hear all that happening, but it did eventually get to this point, and I now can see all of my disks. Now, this bit, you do need to be careful because if you do select the wrong drive, you could cause yourself some problems here, but fortunately on my system, the only eight terabyte drives I have are the ones in the Thunder Bay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of my drives. So I'm going to select the first one, hold down command and select the others. The first thing we need to do is run a initialize. So again, make sure you have the right drive selected. So I'm going to select that initialize and let it run. There we go. All done. Didn't take too long at all. Now, you, what you may want to do is actually run a verification. Now, if you do do that, it does take a long time to do. So I'm not going to do it for the purposes of this demo and just actually getting it set up. What I am going to do though is just select new volume here. We can now go through and configure our array. So I'm going to call mine BFD. I'll leave that to your imagination as to what that is. And I'm going to select my volume type. Now I want it to be RAID 5. So I'm going to select RAID 5 there. File system, I'm going to leave as HFS. I am going to optimize it for server. Of course, you may want to have a, a different optimization there, but all the info for that is in the manual. So I'm going to go down the bottom here. I'm just going to click create and off it'll go and create our RAID 5 array for us. That didn't take too long at all. So from getting this thing fired up to actually getting our RAID available took under five minutes. So let's have a look. You'll see that our drive is now available on the desktop. If we have a look here, you'll see that we've got 24 terabytes available. Now we did say there's four eight terabyte drives, but of course with RAID 5, you lose one of those drives to the striping and the high availability. So let's move on. We'll have a look at the performance of this unit and see what kind of throughput we get from it. So before we jump into looking at the performance of this, there's a couple of things I think you need to be aware of if you're looking at buying one of these units. There's actually two units, and from what I can tell, 
The differentiator between the two is the version of soft raid that comes with them. The cheaper unit only comes with a version of soft raid that supports either JBOD, or just a bunch of discs, and mirroring. Now the more expensive one includes a version of soft raid that it enables you to use raid 5. So make sure you buy the right one because if you don't you'll end up having to either send it back to get the right one or getting the version of soft raid upgraded which of course is going to cost you some money. Anyway, let's get back to the performance of this unit. Let's do a basic test. We'll just fire up the Blackmagic disk speed test. We'll select the array, which is that one there. I think it's set up for a five gig test. Yes, it is. So let's run this performance test. There we go. So you can see I'm getting about 500 megabytes per second read and about 300 megabytes per second write. Now I did notice that the write speed seems to be a little bit all over the place on the disk speed test. Let's also try the AJA system test if it's on here. Let's have a look. So I'm gonna select the array and we'll see what kind of performance we'll get through this device here. That's kind of more in line with what I was expecting based on the performance of these drives. Now, more importantly for me, in my scenario, I was interested in the performance based on a network share rather than locally attached storage because I use this from several different machines and it was the one gig connection that was holding me back on my NAS server. So now I have switched to my iMac Pro. Now this is connected to my Mac Mini over a 10 gig ethernet connection. And this is my RAID array here on the right. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just actually do a speed test, but over the network. So I'm just gonna select the drive. I am going to select the array, which is that one, the BFD. Now, like I say, this is connected over 10 gig ethernet. And now let's try the speed test. So using the Blackmagic test, I seem to get between about 250 to 300 megabytes per second read and write, which is not far off three times better than what I'm getting on my one gig connected Synology. It's possibly not as high as I was expecting, however. Let's also try it on the AJA system test. And there we go. As you can see, the benchmarks in this are also very similar to the Blackmagic tool. Benchmarks are one thing. Let's go and have a look and see what it's like in the real world. Because like I said, what I wanted it for was to speed up my workflow. So when I'm moving around large virtual machine data sets, I just need it to be faster. So let's have an, a look at an example of that. Well, this is a new one on me. I've had to stop the review at this point because my experience with the unit after those tests that I'd just done rapidly went south and the unit for me will be going back, I'll be returning it because I believe it's practically unusable. Let me talk you through why. Firstly, if you want to install the SoftRaid app on a, a, a Mac OS machine running Catalina, you have to go into the recovery console and turn off SIP, that's fine. So I have that done on both of my machines. I then ran into an issue copying stuff over the network to it. Anything bigger than about 40 or 50 gigabytes, it would randomly stop and crash my finder. Now, this is a, a known issue with Catalina. If, and I'll put some links to um, other articles pointing towards this issue. And it was potentially fixed in the 10, 15, 5 beta. And that once I started using the beta, this problem seemed to go away but it's come back with a vengeance in 10.15.5. So the effect for me was every time I tried to copy anything slightly large to this unit, either over 10 gig ethernet or over Thunderbolt 3, and I even tried it over gigabit ethernet, it would fail towards the end, which is no good. Like I say, this is a known problem with Catalina. And because I wanted to test this device, and, I, and to be honest, I don't really care what operating system my server runs, I downgraded my server to Mojave the problem still exists. So in my head, I thought, well, perhaps it's an issue then with the fact that my iMac Pro is running Catalina. So I dual booted my iMac Pro into Mojave as well. So both units are running Mojave at this point, and I was still having issues copying to the device. Now, I suspect this is more of a macOS issue than it is with the OWC Thunder Bay itself. But just be aware that if you do have Catalina, there's a, a ton of hoops that you have to jump through to get it going and and this kind of it reduces my faith in the unit and the last thing i want is not to have faith in a storage unit which which in this case would have had about 20 terabytes of data on it that's not a great position to be so for me the unit will be being returned now i wanted to do a fair review of the unit so what i thought i'd do is i would direct connect the unit to my imac pro sounds reasonable because i could have used it for that and it you know Having that storage locally and another 
replacement for my centralized storage, which another video is coming on that shortly, would have been a reasonable solution. This didn't work either. Essentially, I, I moved it to my iMac Pro. I got Soft Raid installed. It appeared to work for a little while until I noticed the performance had plummeted. And by plummeted, I mean I was getting around 30 to 40 megabytes per second write speed. And while that was happening, the unit itself was very noisy. It's basically all the drives were active and I don't really know what it was doing. And of course this attacked my faith in the unit. Would you want to store that amount of data on something you're unsure about? The answer's no. So I thought, you know what, I'll reboot it. So I reboot it. And what's the first thing it does? It comes up and says, well, Mac OS can't repair this volume. It made all of my data read only and nothing that I could do could convert it from read only. I went into recovery mode. I tried running the first aid from within that. It found some errors, but you know, it still became read only. So I'm sure you can feel my rage building at this point. So what I did at this point, because I still had the data that I wanted on this array, was I completely erased it on my iMac Pro and started again. I then copied my data to it. It was about 10 terabytes at this point, which as you can imagine takes a little while, and it appeared to be okay. So I was getting the performance. I was getting around 400 megabytes per second on it, I think. It was in the video a few minutes ago, and it appeared operational. So I thought, right, okay, we have a solution. Until yesterday morning, I turned the machine on, and what am I met with? Mac OS can't repair this volume. It's now read-only. Now, I don't know whether there's a fault with this unit, but all I can say is, my experience of it has not been great. Now, I do feel for AWC a little bit because they generally provide good products. Now, I don't know whether it's a problem with my setup, but you know what? I'm reviewing my experience of a unit, and my experience of this unit is that it's not particularly usable for me, and it will be going back. So if you do have any questions about this review, drop them in the comments, and I'll see if that I can answer them for you. Now, I'm not expecting a great response to this video, but in my defense, what I will say is I try to be honest with the tech that I get to review. Now, I've spent an awful lot of time with this unit because I wanted it to work. I thought it was a solution to a problem that I had. Now, if I've spent all that time and I can't get it working reliably and I have no faith in it, I'm not gonna put any data on it. I, I would also generally question whether it's the right product. It could, of course, be a problem with my setup, but I do have multiple Macs. And like I say, I have the issue on all of them. So I am quite disappointed in the unit, but fortunately the customer service from OWC is typically excellent. So they've already given me an RMA number and it will be winging its way back to the US shortly. If you're interested in what my actual solution is to this problem now, now that this unit's going back, stay tuned because there's another video coming up shortly which shows you how I've resolved my storage problem. Anyway, until next time.